Now, I've known Dick Ebersol. You've known Dick Ebersol. For years, yeah. When we worked at NBC, I've known Dick Ebersol since the late 70s. Yeah. And he was a guy, and he was always a guy, and he still is a guy. <laughs> the Wrestling Life. Hey, everybody. It's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 312. We're now into the first week of September of 2022 how long have we been doing this show i'm ethan and i'm liam did i say 2012 it's 2022 <laughs> uh oh we have so much to talk about this week and as always so many things we can't talk about on the first and the only wrestling podcast there are three wrestling pay-per-views in a period of 35 hours this weekend. It seems it seems a bit excessive to me. Mm-hmm. But uh but here we are. So we're gonna we're here to talk about uh WWE Castle. We're here to talk about WWE NXT Worlds Collide, and we're here to talk about AEW All Out. We'll do this chronologically. WWE Castle starring Nathan Fillion. <laughs> 1 p.m. Saturday afternoon, Eastern Time. What a what a time! What a great start time. Uh, I mean, hey, I like the idea. If these shows are going to be eight hours long, I would. I like the idea of them starting earlier. I guess. You know, there's only six matches announced for this show, which I find interesting. Is everything going to get a ton of time? Are they going to add a bunch of stuff late? Is it going to be a two and a half hour show? Um, feels like there's a lot of different ways that could go. Perhaps a big angle, a return, a celebrity getting involved in the main event, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I just realized the finish of that match. Uh, it's not good. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh no. Tyson Fury is gonna cost Drew McIntyre and the WWE championship to set up a WrestleMania match. Probably. Or next year's UK Stadium show. Oh Lord. That sounds terrible. Or a Saudi show. You know, a lot of possibilities. That sounds terrible. Remember that Tyson Fury singles match? I don't even remember who he wrestled now, but remember that singles match? The very topical Braun Strowman, in fact. It was yeah. terrible. Yeah. So I guess since we brought it up, after WWE Castle, coming up on uh, on Monday, Braun Strowman is returning to WWE. He uh, controls his narrative. And his narrative yeah. has directed him back to World Wrestling Entertainment. Interesting. Boy, it's uh, it's tough to be a uh, a former WWE guy that Triple H doesn't want to bring back is right now, isn't it? Like Austin Aries and and EC three gotta gotta do MLW and NWA and CYN because. That those phones ain't ringing from any of the uh, any WWE or any of the other you know larger promotions, are they? You know, I don't dislike Braun Strowman, and I think there's a spot for him, and I hope they do the Choo Choo Train again. Oh, that's that'll make it worth it, single handedly. If if when Braun Strowman comes back, he he makes the the sound for the horn or makes the gesture for the horn. And they pipe in a choo-choo noise before he does his little run around the ring again. Uh, that's that's immediately a a big positive for the for the Paul regime uh, to bring him back. So uh, I'm all for it under those circumstances. He's he's a guy. He's a guy. <laughs> he's a guy like Ryback, who because he's a dickhead in real life. Whoa, people. Allegedly, to some people, uh, people I think don't want to always acknowledge that there was a time where there was like there was a window where he could have been like a true top guy in the biggest wrestling company in the world, and you can blame him and his attitude. You can blame the booking. Who, what, whatever happened, it didn't shake out that way in the end. But like, yeah, he's got name value, and he's a, he's a guy. <laughs> he's a guy you can bring back. 
And, you know, we've talked about that for pretty much since the inception of AEW, but WWE since, since triple Paul has taken over, taken over is uh, it's a returns based company now. And, you know, that's a big name that you can bring back. Yeah. Yeah. They're, um, like the lead story in the Wrestling Observer newsletter last week was uh, Dave going over how the momentum has shifted in this wrestling war and it really began shifting with WrestleMania and is now uh, continued all summer. Mm-hmm. And he was trying to draw a lot, draw a lot of conclusions uh, based on that or. Uh, doing correlation causation stuff with w- with that and his big takeaway was what draws on television now are returns and i don't know that i would have drawn that conclusion but i uh, certainly feels like a lot of people have uh have drawn that conclusion and Tony Khan took this, read this, and took this to heart and decided to bring back big cast this week. W. <laughs> Morrissey. <laughs> These right. are guys. These are guys. These are guys that you can bring back. Mm-hmm. People have seen them before on another television show. And so when they appear again, people will clap. <laughs> yeah. I guess they clapped when Morrissey showed up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Everybody's like, hey, Marcy looks so great. He's really taking care of himself. And I don't want to mock the fact that the guy had um, some kind of substance problem, allegedly, and allegedly went to rehab for it and got clean and good for him and uh, and everything. But we've seen uh, what W. Marcy looks like um, without chemical enhancements. And uh, and now he's out here looking like an action figure. So it's like, yeah, he looks great. He's also completely juiced to the gills. Looks like, like what? It. What is wrong with you guys? <laughs> like, what? I mean, if you think his performance improved during his impact run, I wouldn't know. I didn't watch any of it, but who like, did? But if you want to make that argument, great. Like I'm, I'm going to have to take somebody's word for it who watched impact but if you think hey he's a more round performer and yes he has a fresh look so this is a good get fine you know he's a he's an airport head turner right that's the always the thing the old timers talk about uh, oh this guy walks through an airport all everyone's going to turn their head and look because he's tall and he's jacked so you know he's a guy yes so anyway, those two guys have come back this week. Um, we started talking about Castle, and then I went off on a tangent. So we may as well just go ahead and talk about the other stuff here real quick before we get to get into WWE Castle. Uh, Bob Fish not returning to AEW may already be done with the promotion. Mm-hmm. Does a lot of tweets talking about how he go to war with Triple H and he wrestled CM Punk once and kicked out of the go to sleep at. 3.001 and and uh made made some pithy tweets about punk's uh head kicking ability yes subtweeted cm punk or yeah bobby fish uh okay (laughs) all right great i guess you could go to he can go back to nxt and they can reunite uh the two boring guys from (laughs) the undisputed era yeah, I, I I mean, people like seeing, like we said, people like seeing things they've seen before. So you can put him and, and Roddy together and they can have good matches, theoretically. Sure. <laughs> sure. I I don't care. I don't care about Bobby Fish. I, I don't care if he ever works again. <laughs> I do feel like Bob Fish at... 53 years old as he is is not a guy who's in a position to be burning bridges but i guess he really feels like he's gonna have options uh i mean you can always i mean anybody like him can hit the indie circuit but 
you know, Tony Khan owns two wrestling companies. Now you'd think you'd want to keep your <laughs> options open to work for one of them at least. And obviously they, they, I guess now will never pay off the, the red dragon young bucks or elite versus undisputed era feuds that were teased like a year ago and then dropped and then had started to get some steam behind them when they did the uh, Adam Cole turn on the bucks a few weeks ago. Uh, I guess that'll, well, I guess the good news for, for Adam and Kyle uh, is that there's like 50 other former NXT and ring of honor guys who work for uh, <laughs> AEW now. So they could just pick a guy. <laughs> they don't, they don't, they don't really need Bob to be the third guy in their, in their crew. Yeah, it could be it could be literally anyone. That's that's so they got that going for. Them. That's good. All right, we'll talk about more stuff as we get into it here. WWE Castle, uh, six matches announced for this show. It's possible they add more during SmackDown. I uh, possible we get a two and a half hour show like the old NXT Papa H takeovers. Um, it's possible. This show somehow still manages to go twelve hours. We'll we'll see. Well, Could be any number. Remember, of you got to remember that there's going to be the Peacock uh, commercial video packages, which will add ten minutes after every single match. So you know we'll get we'll get over three hours. Don't you worry. There's that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Edge and Rey Mysterio with uh, Big Dom Mysterio in their corner will be wrestling the Judgment Day with Rhea Ripley in their corner. They did an angle on Raw where they acted like uh, Big Dom was going to beat up Rhea Ripley with the kendo stick. And I was like, you know what? Maybe Vince Russo is a consultant for the USA Network. (laughs) But ultimately, they didn't pay that off. Uh, Edge and Ray against the Judgment Day. Maybe maybe this will be something. Uh, It'll be a fun tag match. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. Um, You know, I wish... I don't know how many like Ray Ray's such a miracle because it looked like his career was winding down like 15 years ago and yeah he's still very very good and it's like man I wish he could have like some really good matches before before it ends for real um I mean we know Edge isn't going to have any more good matches but it would be nice <laughs> if Ray still could but <laughs> You know, hey, maybe this will be all right. The crowd will, if you know, the crowd will be hot because Edge and Ray are big stars, and Finn's from a general <laughs> geographic area in that in that part of the world. <laughs> yes, a lot of reasons to get excited about that. Gunther defending the Intercontinental Championship against Sheamus. Again, they've done a rough geographic thing here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, now Sheamus will. They'll beat the tar out of each other. It'll be fun. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, Riddle, Matt Riddle versus Seth freaking Rollins. Um, Riddle's supposed to be the baby face here. I don't think many people see it that way. Um, Riddle against Seth Rollins. I really enjoyed that segment they did on Raw on Monday where they were they swore at each other. <laughs> Yeah, it was. I mean, I think a lot of people have pointed it out, but it was the the John Jones Daniel Cormier thing, right? Like it was. Yes. Which, hey, that was that was a very famous thing that led to a very big pay per view buy rate. So, like, it's not a not a bad idea to to borrow from stuff that worked there. But yeah, it was it was a fun funny line. I I think I don't blame anyone for not liking because when you when you allude to someone's uh, real life troubles at home. Uh, yes. And the source of at least some of those trouble were uh, sexual assault allegations made yeah. against him. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can see why people, some people didn't didn't like that or don't really like seeing Matt Riddle on their television in any form. Um, sure, but yeah, I mean, as far as building up a pro wrestling match, it was it was effective. It was, I thought, the best thing they've done. Like a bunch of brawls and stuff. Seth laid him out a bunch of times. Um, <laughs> this was probably, I thought, the most effective thing they've done, though, as far as just building up. Hey, these are two angry men who want to fight each other. All right, good job. It worked. Very much so. Very much so. Um, there's a six woman tag match where Bianca Belair. Alexa Bliss and Oscar are going to team against Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Eos Sky. Dakota Kai and Eos Sky inexplicably lost in the finals of the tag team tournament. 
mm-hmm. this past Monday on Raw to Aaliyah and Raquel Gonzalez, a thrown together tag team in a match that was something of a um, disaster. <laughs> uh, can't really figure out what they're doing here. Um, I think at some point we're getting uh, Sasha and Naomi coming back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Could be here, could be Monday, could be next Friday. Um, I'm not sure when exactly. Um, I don't know where this is going anymore, though, now that uh, Dakota and EO are not uh, the tag team champions. Yeah, well, here's I have some thoughts, which one is obviously in the before times, uh, before Triple H was uh, exiled and and killed uh, (laughs) the first time. um, He really liked Raquel Gonzalez or Rodriguez. Yes. um, Really saw something in her. Can't imagine why. He certainly. She's his type. Yep, she sure is. Uh, And so on one hand, I think this is him course correcting. Um, and on the other hand, I think if you want to give him the benefit of the doubt with this decision, other than just, he thinks Raquel's a star and wants to give her a signature win on the main roster and a main event of a television show. Uh, if you're serious about building this women's tag division, you need teams and you don't got any right now besides EO and Dakota and theoretically Sasha and Naomi when they come back. So you've now made a third team because they have the belts. <laughs> so if you're if you're serious about building up your, your tag division here, you gotta start somewhere and having the only other established tag team hold the belts, you can go, well, they don't have anybody to wrestle except for for Sasha and Naomi, whereas, okay, now there's a third team that they can throw in and you can delay or you can have them chase or you can have Sasha and Naomi come back with their belts and and you build a unification match and then the winner of that faces Io and uh, and uh, Dakota. I don't know. I just, I, like, if you're looking at it glass half full, you're like, hey, they got to establish some new teams. Is Aaliyah and Raquel the team I would choose? No. I don't think Aaliyah would be in a professional wrestling role on my television show if I were Triple H. But, hey, you picked a new team and they won the belts and that's a way to establish them as a real team and not just something that was thrown together because we needed bodies for this tournament. That's fair. That's more than fair. Uh, Liv Morgan defending the SmackDown Women's title against Shayna Baszler. Um, Shayna Baszler being built up as a killer again instead of just someone who eats the pin in every match she's in Um, Liv Morgan I think they kept her off TV for a little while um, after they somehow managed to get her booed (laughs) and uh, I think she got a a better reaction when she was on Smackdown last week so uh, Liv, Shayna stadium show um, we'll we'll see what they got and uh, I don't I assume Liv is keeping the title here, although Ronda and Shayna sure makes a lot more sense. Uh, so maybe they'll like, like I, I don't know, maybe they'll do something here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think on live events for the last month or so, Ronda and Shayna have been tagging as heels, right? Sure. Sounds good. So, I mean, you you could still do something there where, you know, Ronda comes back and teams with Shayna and maybe Shayna even wins the belt. And then eventually one turns on the other around the rumble or whatever. And you do that match there like there. Yeah, you could you could do lots of stuff. The, pro- the problem with that, that Ronda is a giant baby face on the television, though. And maybe we'll have a more of a clear picture of this after SmackDown this week when they're they're doing some kind of final judgment angle with uh, with Ronda. Um. She she's definitely a giant baby face. So I don't think Shane is going baby face. And uh I guess they could do an, an odd couple or or shades of gray like tag team with them or whatever. But mm-hmm. I I don't know. Rhonda's Rhonda's a giant baby face on TV. Like shockingly so. 
<laughs> well, they did have to tell her not to heal on the fans her first <laughs> week back. But yeah, since then. Uh, did you see her explanation for that? Her explanation for that was, look, I was supposed to come back as a heel. I wanted to be a heel. And then Vince mm-hmm. is like, hey, the people love you. We got to go with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Anyway, what do you think Vince is doing right now? Um, That woman that he was at John Cena's birthday dinner with. Oof. Hey, oh, right. I don't know. I don't know. I imagine like, don't you feel like he's he's still making calls <laughs> and still giving his opinion? I don't. I really don't. Like, maybe not to Paul and Stephanie, but, like, to Bruce, to Nick, to somebody. Like, somebody's got to be on the receiving end of this man's psychosis. I re- I really don't. I really don't. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm naive. I really do think he's just, like, pacing his apartment. <laughs> well, you know, to a nicer guy, it couldn't happen. I think they put Bruce in like uh, uh, a broom closet in the basement of <laughs> Titan Towers. Hunter's old office, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, because Bruce all of a sudden has uh, has time to record his podcast again. There's a new episode of that this week after like several months of rehash and rerun episodes. So clearly he's got a few spare hours every week now. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. All right. And then the other match on WWE Castle is uh, the Undisputed Universal Championship. Roman Reigns gets Drew McIntyre. They've done a lot of videos making you think that Drew McIntyre is winning the title. And it sure seems like. Just remember, just remember Shawn Michaels beat Davy Boy Smith uh-huh. in, the U- in the UK after Davy Boy. Um, Dedicated the match to his sister who was dying of cancer. Uh huh. Vice president of creative in WWE currently, Shawn Michaels. Yeah, yeah, that's quite something. So my, I, I really thought Drew was going to win this match, uh-huh. and then the Tyson, the Tyson Fury thing happened, and it's like, well, Tyson Fury's costing Drew McIntyre <laughs> this match. Sure seems that way. Oh, we've been hyping this up. I think there was even a time where this match was supposed to happen on this show and then Tyson got a real fight so he's yeah. uh, he's unavailable for the time being but uh you know we got we got Saudi shows we got WrestleMania next year we got uh you know possibly more stadium shows maybe another UK show maybe not another one in Cardiff but you know yeah. maybe there'll be a, a show somewhere in in Ireland or Scotland or England next year who knows uh maybe they'll go back to Wembley Maybe. Yep. 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 All right. So that's WWE Castle to this point. Uh, NXT UK died this week. They are their last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Luckily, everyone that lost their jobs can go back to that thriving UK indie scene that, uh, that NXT UK helped cultivate. You know, is there really an indie scene anywhere in the world right now, though? I mean that not that you're incorrect. WWE did um dismantle um strategically tried to kill the indie scene in the UK. Mm-hmm. However, with the pan- with they could not have foreseen a global pandemic and there's not a thriving indie scene anywhere in the world right now. That's fair. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's just always I think for better and for worse, the the NXT UK legacy is it it killed it killed the territories a couple of years ahead of uh, ahead of schedule. Yep, and and then that died itself. Mm-hmm. It died itself. I don't know that they be. Yeah, it's one of those weird weird chicken or the egg things. It was like, did did the pandemic kill it, or was it already going to die? I don't know. Um. Yeah, because they killed the wrestling scene over there, they were, they were doing all these tapings in, in an empty TV studio for months and months and months and months. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's not like it was a hot show before. 
there were no fans there. Like that's true. Nobody ever talked about that show. Like the only time I can remember anyone talking about NXT was after the pandemic hit when uh, uh, Walter and somebody had that match with no fans where they chopped the hell out of each other for 20 minutes. Um, oh, it was dragging off. Um, yeah, which was great. Um, but that's like, that was the only match I remember breaking through the, the, uh, the, uh, the, Zeit- the wrestling Twitter zeitgeist where everyone's like, oh my God, you got to go watch this match. Like, it's not like it was a particularly on fire brand. They were, I think, preparing to do like another arena show. They were, gonna, I think they were going to do Balor and Walter for the UK yeah. title on a, on a UK, uh, arena show. And yeah. obviously that didn't happen. So I guess maybe that would have lit it on fire if they sent Finn over there for a while. But <laughs> I have my well, doubts. We'll never know. We will never know. All right. Uh, chronologically here, then Sunday afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern, NXT Worlds Collide. Five matches announced for this show. Um, they're going to be unify. Uh, the NXT tag titles and the NXT NXT UK tag titles. They're going to unify the NXT women's title and the NXT UK women's title. They're going to unify the NXT title and the NXT UK title. There's also two other matches on the show. Carmel Hayes is wrestling Rick O'Shea for the North American title. Should be real good. Pretty random, but yeah, good match. Yeah, Rick O'Shea showed up. Uh, on NXT this week, and they made fun of his promo ability. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, the the uh, in the tag team title unification match, the Creeds will face uh, um, Briggs and Jensen, uh, Mark Coffee and Wolfgang, and Yes Boy, Pretty Deadly. Um, Make up pretty some deadly. of those names. Elton Prince and Kit Wilson are pretty <laughs> deadly, by the way. I did not make them up, although they are like random name generator names without question. Um, there's some good characters in this man. Pretty deadly are a main roster act. I hope they get there sooner than later. I was going to say, it seemed like they were right up Vince's alley right before Vince got taken out of power. But I would hope that uh, that that Paul would still see the value in, in a good undercard comedy heel team like this before the official purge of nxt uk they had already brought them over to regular nxt and they'd held the nxt tag titles so it's like Mm -hmm. someone there someone there is a fan um whether it's sean or whoever somebody there is a fan of those guys so um Briggs and Jensen, I, they're in this match. They're the NXT UK tag champions for some reason, despite their gimmick being. Uh, the... I know you don't watch NXT 2.0, so let me explain that uh, Briggs and Jensen, their gimmick, and uh, they are uh, managed by Fallon Henley. Uh, their gimmick is that they're um, virgin cowboys. I see. Yeah, that uh, that's that's an idea, certainly. I guess no one can deny that of all the ideas. That's one of them. Yes. All right. Uh, Also a match for the NXT women's tag titles. Uh, Katana chance and Caden Carter will be defending against the main roster duo of Nikki a S H and Dewdrop. They've at least Nikki has uh, given up her Cape for now. Nikki got some new gear on NXT this week and, uh, I assume she's just there to eat the pin, but, mm-hmm. but, uh, and I think maybe we, we unified the NXT tag and the main roster women's tag titles at some point, but, um, I, Katana and Caden have just become champions, so I don't think they're losing these yet. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's fun. Like, that's a, that's a fun idea to, there, I like the idea of main roster people just like stopping by for a cup of coffee in, uh, in NXT. I think that's, that's a yeah. it's not a bad idea especially because if this is and we don't really quite know what what NXT will be under under Paul's regime but if it's going to continue to be a place where you bring incredibly green people that have never wrestled before uh makes sense to start cycling in 
uh, more more main roster people to come in, have a match or a program with uh, with some of these some of these folks that you think are talented but need uh, need some seasoning, and then and then uh, they can they can go back up to SmackDown or wherever. Yep, it's a real good idea. A um, little bit of hot goss. Were you aware that uh, Blair Davenport and Will Osprey were no longer together? Mm-hmm. Okay, I was I was late on that. Yep. I didn't I didn't I didn't realize that till That's, last week. That is B Priestley, right? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 They've uh, I think they broke up like r- right around the time they did the the angle in the Tokyo Dome to write her out of his entourage where he gave her a, a cutter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Anyway, there's a triple threat match um, at Worlds Collide to unify the NXT Women's title and the NXT UK Women's title. Mandy Rose, who's the NXT Women's Champion and has been seemingly for most of my lifetime, uh, <laughs> will be facing Miko Satomura, who is the NXT UK Women's Champion. And Two who... icons of women's wrestling. That's right. Basically. Miko's been around so long. She wrestled on Nitro. Like, she's been <laughs> around forever. And uh, they will face Blair Davenport, the aforementioned Blair Davenport, in a triple threat match uh, to unify all those titles. They're high on Blair. Blair's a good worker. Uh, Miko is a legend. And uh, Mandy is Mandy. So Mandy's winning, right? Look, she's won pretty much every every match for many years now. Mm-hmm. And... Okay. Like okay like mandy mandy <laughs> never progressed to the point she never became like as great a worker as i think she had the potential to be but also i feel like at some point to look like mandy rose you have to work out twice a day and sometimes she like posts on social media that she's like on her second s- sauna session of the day so it's like if i was working out two hours a day and in a sauna two hours a day I don't think I would be super motivated to go to the performance center and have Albert and uh, Robbie Brookside yell at me for doing my my jumping jacks wrong and be in, be willing to to put in two extra hours in the ring taking bumps. It's like I'm sure she's got a ton of injuries just from working out, let alone from wrestling. And it's like Mandy Rose, Mandy Rose is Mandy Rose. It, it's, t- it's totally fine in the role they have her in. If she's the NXT Women's Champion for life, there are worse things. Fair enough. These are my thoughts. These are my thoughts. All right, then the main event of that show is uh, Braun Breaker and Tyler Bate uh, for the... They'll be unifying the NXT and the NXT UK titles. Um, Tyler Bate, obviously Triple H, a big proponent of Ron Breaker. I think it feels very much like a Bruce Pritchard project to me, even though I know Sean came out and said, well, Bruce and Vince didn't have time to be involved in creative here. It's like Bruce always loved the Steiners and wanted to do stuff with the Steiners and Vince never wanted to do anything with the Steiners and never understood the Steiners. Uh Uh-huh. And then you got Braun Breaker, whose gimmick is he's Rick Steiner's kid. He wrestles like the Steiners. He doesn't really have a gimmick. So his gimmick by default is like half shooter, amateur wrestler guy. It's like he's I don't know if he's a, if he's a Triple H guy. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I guess I guess we'll never know because it feels like he. He, per- I, I guess he was he was signed by it before Triple H was gone, but he wasn't really on TV before Triple H was gone. So hard to hard to say for sure. But yeah, like I mean, of the of the non indie guys, they have they have an, an NXT these days. It's like he's he's very good for given his level of experience. Um, obviously, before. Paul was in charge. He was doing like some house show loops on the main roster already. So, you know, if, but of the two, if you're like, who is more ready to wrestle on national television live next Monday, you would probably say Tyler Bate just because of his experience. And he's a very talented guy, but 
who's more likely to get that call. I, I think even in Triple H's NXT I, or in, in WWE, I think it might still be Breaker just because of the, the size and the the quote unquote it factor that he he might possess that uh, the Tyler does not. That's fair. That's fair. He's 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 like John Cena's size, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like Cena Cena, Cena might be an inch or two taller. Also, um, yeah. Anyway, I think that matters less now than ever, but it it is worth noting he's not super gigantic, huge either. Mm-hmm. All right. That is uh that's worlds collide. All out. Boy, do I have a lot of thoughts about all out. <laughs> and uh there are 14 matches announced for this program coming up on Sunday. It's AEW's pay-per-view. They decided to announce the main event for the show the week of the show. They did an angle with East Steel. Mm-hmm. Perhaps the highlight of his career was when he played Donald Trump on Raw <laughs> in the Donald Trump versus Rosie O'Donnell match they did. I did not know that was him. That's a fun little trivia tidbit. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, Boy. All right. Well, there are uh, three matches announced for the pre-show. All out. Tomohiro Ishii versus Eddie Kingston. I saw that match live. It's very good. Don't know why it's on this pay-per-view, but it will be very good. <laughs> Pac versus Kip Sabian. Pac, sorry, versus Kip Sabian for the All-Atlantic Championship. Kip Sabian cost Pac a shot at the Trios Championships, and now it's a match on the pre-show. Okay. I mean, it was either this on or on like a British indie show, probably, right? I guess, I guess they waited like many, many months before they brought Kip Sabian back. Mm -hmm. And this is what they brought him back for. Okay, fine, fine. Well, that would make you think there was an original idea they didn't go with then, right? Because I don't think they knew a year ago there's going to be an all Atlantic championship that Pac is going to win and then defend on various indie shows for weeks when he can't get into the country <laughs> uh, and or can't get to the U S and then we're going to have Kip follow him around to some indie shows and then, and then do this big angle nine months after Kip was cleared or whatever. It's very odd. It's very odd. I can't, I can't begin to understand the thought process, but there's that hook defending against the FTW championship, defending that against Angela Parker of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Sure, why not? Is Hook ever going to learn how to work? I mean, I don't have a problem with the guy. He's over, and you bring him out on these shows, and he gets a nice reaction, Mm -hmm. and he goes out there and does a 45-second match. Is he ever going to learn how to be good? And Does he need to be? Well, no. (laughs) But you would you would think maybe, you know, a 19 year old good looking kid. What? This guy. This this took a turn. Uh It's like maybe you don't want him to be Bill Goldberg. I don't know. You know, I mean, sure. But Taz wasn't the prototypical. uh, uh, Monster either. No, I just think it's a little early in his career to pigeonhole him as the guy who can only work 45 seconds, though. And, ma- and maybe he's maybe he's getting a lot of ring time uh, off screen that we don't see. That's possible. But, he did have one. I think it was with QT on one of these pre shows where they went like eight minutes. And, QT... and he, he yeah, he sold a little. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe this match will include some of that. But yes, his last few television matches have been exceptionally brief. I think he sold a little in the the Tony Nese uh, Dan Housen match, too. But like, yes, by and large, your point is is not incorrect in that he is. He has, for the most part, done very quick squashes where he does very little and then wins with a, a choke. So. All right. Um, main card. 
Brian Danielson versus Chris Jericho, this uh, 2012 SmackDown ass match. I'm I'm sure it'll be great. Mm-hmm. I've seen this a lot. Ten years ago, did they wrestle a lot? I don't know. Maybe I'm remembering CM Punk and Danielson on SmackDown and like on pay per views. Punk and Danielson wrestled a bunch in 2012. That's what I'm remembering. And Punk and probably. Jericho wrestled a bunch in 2012. Yeah, it just doesn't feel doesn't feel new or important to me. But that's fair. I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, I it's my feeling is that we I don't know how long Brian Danielson's going to be in AEW. That's and, fair, <laughs> and he's going to be wrestling on on pay per view. I would like to see, you know, matches that remind me that he's one of the greatest wrestlers of his generation. And a match against Chris Jericho, while I'm sure it'll be good and the crowd will be into it and they'll both work really hard, is not a match that makes me go, oh, God, thank God he's not in WWE right now. <laughs> like, there's there's matches that Brian Danielson has had since he's gotten to AEW where you're like, oh, thank God that he's here having these matches that he would never have right. anywhere else. And this is not one of those. This is a match that could, as you pointed out, have been on an EWB show from uh you know 2011 through uh 2017 or whenever Jericho left. Right. They could have a competent wrestling match together in their sleep, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. But also there's a ceiling to 52-year-old Chris Jericho matches at this point. Mhm. And I don't know if this will get past that ceiling. He's yeah, he's had good matches with with Moxley and Eddie Kingston this year. And the Moxley match was a bit more of a smoke and mirrors. You know, there was blood and 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 interference and stuff towards the end of that that you probably won't have in this match, or maybe you will. I guess there's the the match is also built as the who gets to be Daniel Garcia's dad. That's really what's <laughs> on the line here. It's not about belts. It's not about money. It's about who gets to be <laughs> Daniel Garcia's father. <laughs> who gets to care for the boy? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. Who gets to be his dad? That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. Uh, there's a four way for the interim AEW Women's World Title on this show: Tony Storm versus Britt Baker versus Jamie Hader versus Hikaru Shida. So, booking wise, they did a, a a tag match on Dynamite this week where Shida pinned Britt Baker, mm-hmm. and it's like. There's one of two finishes you had to do to establish people in this match as a as a legitimate threat to win the championship. And one would be Hater pinning Tony, and the other would be Sheeta pinning Baker. And Britt gets promo time and is pretty bulletproof. So I can't knock the booking. That finish made sense. Mm-hmm. Sheeta pinned Baker on Dynamite this week. Tony was supposed to win the title from Thunder Rosa before Thunder Rosa lost her smile. <laughs> um, so I assume Tony's winning this, uh, but but maybe not. Maybe maybe we do Brit. Uh, we do Brit and Thunder again. <laughs> what? I wonder. I wonder what Thunder Rosa's deal is up. It's interesting. She went from like coaching the division alongside Dustin Rhodes. Mm-hmm. To they specifically brought in Madison Rain as a coach and kind of removed Thunder from the hierarchy there. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder. She's, what? I bet she sells a lot of action figures mm-hmm. and she's very smart about that kind of thing. She talked in a press conference about how she likes to use different looks to be very toyetic and come up with different. Um, so they release a lot of different action figures of her. So she changes her look frequently and all that stuff. But uh, also probably pretty clearly not the most popular person there. And the injury is supposedly legit. She does have a legit back injury. But how, how, you know, how bad is it? <laughs> how bad yeah. is it? That that was sort of the subtext I thought of. There was a question asked of Tony Khan on his media conference because we still do those for some reason uh, before before and after pay per views. We do the phone conference before, and uh, 
someone yeah. asked him, I think about like how much time uh, Rosa got to abdicate her belt versus how much time Punk did. Yeah. And first he had a more of, I think a pithy line about like, well, if I give CM Punk eight minutes, it's because that's going to do well in, uh, right. in viewership and Thunder Rosa in that same segment would not. Right. And and then he had another line about like, hey, well, when I was putting this show together, I didn't know that she was going to come to TV and tell me she was hurt and couldn't wrestle. Right. So I fit her in where I could, basically. So he buried her twice there is what you're saying. Pretty much. <laughs> I just, it, didn't, it doesn't seem like The Office is uh, jazzed about it or is particularly sympathetic to her. Uh, to her injury like i'm sure she has her friends there obviously she and dustin are very close but uh it doesn't sound like uh the uh the tippy top of the brass here is uh is really uh <laughs> is is re- the tippy top of the brass here is really feeling uh feeling feeling the love for rosa or feeling much uh sympathy for her uh for her plight sure if you do a Tony Storm run, that's fine. But this feels more like a let's pass the belt around kind of uh, run than, I mean, Britt Baker's still clearly the star of the division and Britt should pretty much always be champion until she shouldn't be. So Right, until there's a character that you think you want to push more than her. <laughs> like, it's it should be her. Uh, the last thing I'll say on this match is that during the match this week, uh, JR was rambling oh. as he is want to know. <laughs> and he said something, and I wasn't really paying exact attention to what he said. Sure. I heard him say something about Hikaru Shida is more Americanized now. Oh, and at the time to- at the time he said it, she was doing like the punches in the corner where the crowd counts along. Right. And I thought he was talking about her wrestling. Like, oh, she's added in more like traditional us pro wrestling spots to appeal to the crowd and i was like okay well that was a clumsy way of saying that but whatever right and then i realized i went back and listened and he said he he was specifically talking about her look and her makeup that is what he said (laughs) maybe that's not what he meant but that's what he said (laughs) he said he said she is more americanized in her gear and her makeup and that's a good, and I mean that as a good thing, is what he said. Just, you know, you, I, I've seen you point out, we went from phasing JR out, having him just do main events in the second mm-hmm. hour of Dynamite, to have him doing all of Dynamite again, and all of Rampage. The worst trade deal in the history of trade <laughs> deals. Maybe ever. We went from phasing down JR to more, more, more JR. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm sure he'll he'll be out for a couple hours of the pay-per-view. I don't think they're gonna have him do a five hour pay-per-view on Sunday, but we'll see. Uh, then. Wouldn't be the first I mean they've done it before. Mm-hmm. He they usually bring him out at the start of the the start of the uh, the main card. So we'll see how that goes. Oh good. Only eleven hours or only eleven matches and four hours of JR. Unreal. Could be four hours plus. They mm-hmm. might go to twelve forty again. Uh, hopefully Tony only does that in his whole thing was about how it was a Las Vegas show was his defense for that. So I'm hoping in his weird little mind that uh, that that means this show won't go as long as that uh, the double or nothing show did. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> uh, House of Black, Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews wrestling Darby Allen, Sting, and Miro. Fun Sting six man on a pay per view. No problem with that. Yeah, there should be one of these on every AEW show, and I think for the most part there has been since Sting has come in. So, thumbs up. We still need to do your dream match, Darby and, and Sting against the Bucks. See, everyone's like, "Oh, the Bucks turn babyface because they don't want to put over FTR," and it's like, I don't care about that because, quite frankly, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about FTR, and I don't think the Bucks should put them over. <laughs> Um, but man, Bucks turning babyface before they gave me that Sting and Darby match. 
furious about that. Yeah. Yeah. They also may just be baby faces for this story. Mm-hmm. Um, although, I mean, clearly this is leading to Hangman getting back with those those guys. But <laughs> I, don't, I, 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 I don't know. Regardless, who who could possibly care? Well, maybe Sting uh, and the... Nero can tr- challenge the elite for the tag titles and I can at least get it in a six man. They've been in the same match before, right? Oh, that's true. Yeah. Forbidden door. They did. Because they do the spot where the young bucks do the double super kick and then Sting beats his chest and it was incredible. <laughs> and the whole crowd stood on their feet. <sighs> yes. I just want more of it. That's <laughs> all I want in this G damn company. They also did the spot where he was too tall and they super kicked him in the shoulders. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then he also that was an purple, he did a purple nerfle spot with El Fantasmo <laughs> as well. <laughs> Sting's the best, man. <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. All right. Uh, AEW TBS title match. Jade Cargill versus Athena. Somebody's got to beat Jade at some point. I don't think uh, I don't think Athena is that person. No, I mean, the, gosh, I think Athena came in at that Vegas show. <laughs> Speaking of which. It's been a long time. Yeah. And, I, and maybe there was supposed to be a Statlander jade match at some point in between there before statlander got hurt or whatever but yeah yeah it feels like this match came in and it, everybody was excited and then athena's barely been on the shows for the last three months so now they're finally doing it so uh you know again i think someone like athena is the type of person that jade should be working with if you want jade to be a a long-term top star in your company sure jungle boy versus christian cage They've had a feud where they've said a lot of swears. <laughs> There's been a lot of feelings. Mm-hmm. It's been, all the stuff's been pretty good. I, I don't, I don't like the 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 shoot, fake shoot, promo stuff. But yeah, I can't knock. I can't knock too much of anything they've done with this. It's been, it's been, other than the Luchasaurus <laughs> turn, not turn. Um. By AEW state by my standard for AEW, all of this stuff has been pretty good in the Jungle Boy Christian uh, feud. I mean, it's good in at the very least, even if it's not lighting your world on fire. Like it has a beginning, middle, and end, right? Like yes. it started with that battle royal a year and a half ago, and right. then he was their manager for like a year, and then he turned on them, and now Jungle Boy is back, and we're having the match now. So it's like, yeah, you can. You could follow that trajectory fairly easily. Yep. A trios match, Wardlow and FTR teaming against Jay Lethal and question mark the Motor City Machine Guns? Question mark. This was supposed to be Jay Lethal, Satnam Singh, and Sanjay Dutt originally. It was originally announced as that. And... Um, then they tried to gaslight you into saying that they never announced that match <laughs> and when in fact they had, and then the match became Wardlow and FTR against Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns. Without a doubt, a better match than uh, Jay Lethal, Satnam Singh, and Sanjay Dutt. But not um, for me. Also, no earthly idea why this is on this show. Look, the only thing that can come, <laughs> the only good thing that can come out of the amount of television time that I have been forced to see Jay Lethal get over the past six months is if you give me Satnam Singh versus Wardlow <laughs> on live television. And this match is not that, and therefore I don't want it. That's a very Dave Batista, great Kali match. Mm-hmm. Um, may- maybe before we, before Batista worked those matches with The Undertaker and developed a bit of a rep as a good worker. <laughs> we mm-hmm. weren't sure we weren't sure Dave Batista was a good worker. <laughs> he was wrestling. He's wrestling the great Kali a lot. Yeah. It's yeah, the type same. of match that this industry was built upon. It's a semi-athletic muscle-bound guy wrestling a giant who can't do anything. That's what this business is all about. Oh <laughs> uh, well, hopefully someday you'll get your Satnam Singh Wardlow match. Um, yeah. 
A casino ladder match has been announced for this show. The winner receives a future AEW world title shot, which they will almost surely lose. Uh, Claudio Castagnoli versus Wheeler Utah versus Penta El Zero Miedo versus Ray Phoenix versus Roosh versus Andrade Alidolo versus Dante Martin versus The Joker. A lot of speculation that The Joker is going to be MJF. And that if you're doing a story, MJF and Punk for the title is the direction they go with this. I could not possibly care. MJ, I, I just, I don't care. I don't care what they do. I don't care if they bring MJF back. I don't, I don't particularly need to see a 20 minute ladder match on this show, uh, but we're getting one. So a lot of good workers in that match. It'll be fun. Oh yeah. Phoenix will do something incredible. Dante Martin's going to jump off the top of the ladder. <laughs> I just, I, I don't care. I, I don't care. Rush is going to no sell somebody's finish if we're lucky. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Andrade is going to tear a muscle <laughs> or his pants. <laughs> or, or, <laughs> we, should, we should be so lucky. <laughs> All right. Um, Anyway, you got to read on if they're bringing MJF back for this. I guess that's the scuttlebutt and the speculation, but I don't know. Seems like a real weird way to bring this guy back. I feel like, not that I'm a fan of this work shoot thing they did with him. Um, but especially, you know, who's really not a fan of it, who we talked about at the time, Wardlow, not a fan of, <laughs> of what they did with mjf yeah he he buried kind of the whole thing this week it's like yeah, that really hurt my momentum and really ruined what was supposed to be like my coronation mm-hmm. two-year storyline up in smoke <laughs> yep but uh yeah so i don't but it just seems weird that he would just come back as a, a guy in a ladder match after be, having his mic cut on live television and you know they did the segment they never acknowledged this on television or anywhere or on twitter or anything but after that segment where mjf came out and you know yelled at tony khan and called him a mark and whatever a punk came out and like ran mjf out of the ring so right clearly when mjf comes back he's gonna work with punk uh so you would think that it's if it's if he's coming back it's probably on this show um i would maybe hold him off and just have him do a stare down with punk or have him do like a, you know, a drive by run in on punk at the end of the show. I don't know if I would have him be in this ladder match, but Hey, you got a, you got a stadium show in New York in a couple weeks and, and you got a, that you're still trying to sell some tickets to, and you got a November pay-per-view and whatever, whatever the heck else. So maybe it's just, Hey, get him back, get him in the title picture immediately. You don't have to worry about explaining rankings. Not that they really do that often, but just say, hey, he won the he won the the big uh, what is it? Is it the big gold ring? What do they hang up uh, from the ring for uh, for these ladder matches? Sometimes it's the brass ring. This is a casino ladder match, so it'll be a big uh, poker chip, I guess. Ah, ah, yes. All right, so that's the way. Yeah, if you want, if you, I guess, if you want to do MJF versus Punk for the belt immediately, uh, then I guess that's a way to do it. Sure. Tag team title match. Swerve in our glory against the acclaimed. At least it's not a multi person tag team match mm-hmm. or a multi team tag team match. It's Swerve against the acclaimed two baby face teams. A little bit weird. Um, although I guess Keith and Swerve kind of have a little bit more of a heelish edge to them now. And uh, the acclaimed have been adopted by Billy Gunn, <laughs> who's disowned his own sons. And adopted the acclaim. Yeah. Well, his sons disowned him first, to be fair. It's true. It's true. I mean, yeah, this feels, this feels like the zenith of the acclaims as an act. Like, <laughs> so either they win the belts here, or I don't know what you do with them if they, because you now you've turned them babyface and they're challenging for the belts. I mean, I guess you could lose and then do a longer term thing of them building up to another title shot somewhere down the road, but. Like this feels like they're as popular as they're gonna get as a tag team right now, uh, and so maybe maybe put the titles on them. Like I don't know, I don't know if they want to keep the the swerve and and key thing going, 
uh, or, or, or if they're ready to pull the trigger on them breaking up, who, who knows, but it feels like if there were a time to put the tag titles on the acclaimed, it's probably now. They, in as much as anyone feels like they have momentum there right now, the acclaimed definitely feel like they have momentum. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Speaking of people that have momentum, um, Ricky Starks is wrestling powerhouse Hobbs in a singles match. They don't give anything time to breathe on these shows, mm-hmm. but um, it feels like Ricky Starks. He got a really good reaction to a babyface promo a few weeks ago, and it's like as much as anyone has any momentum there, Ricky Starks does, and Ricky Starks feels like he should be the next guy that's challenging for the world title, not MJF, but mm-hmm. um, I would go ahead and, and have Ricky Starks win and uh, go ahead and have him move up the card a little bit, but we'll see what they do with uh, Starks and Powerhouse Hops. Yeah, I think this is uh if I were these guys, I wanna I'd be begging to go on first. <laughs> Cause yeah. I think these guys can have like a really good eight. Like I don't know. I've never seen a really long Hobbs singles match. Just, I don't know what he can he can do as a singles. He's been in a tag team for most of his his time in AEW. But if I were them, I'm like, hey Tony, let us go on first. Give us eight minutes, do you know, a bunch of big cool power moves, and then Ricky does his comeback and wins and get in, get out. That's what I this is that's what I'd be hoping for if I were them. Yep. Um, the finals of the trios tournament, the elite versus a team to be determined. It's almost surely going to be John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and Hangman Page. Um, a lot of guys in their thirties doing a storyline revolving around their feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, crowd's yep. gonna love it. Crowd, the AEW audience is very into it. So good for them. I, I love this storyline because part of it is contingent upon the fact that Kenny doesn't watch the show <laughs> because he's not aware per BTE. He is not aware that they asked Hangman Page to be their partner. He may also not be aware that Adam Cole turned on the Bucks, <laughs> but he's definitely not aware of Hangman Page having, uh, having been asked to be the Bucks partner before he came back, nor was he aware that the Bucks could have stopped Hangman Page for beating him for the world title, and uh, and chose not to? So there's uh, there's there's palace intrigue in this uh, this elite this elite group. But hey, you know, uh, with all the the backstage uh, uh, stuff going around, maybe it's a good idea to consolidate uh, power <laughs> if you're the EVPs and get get hangman back in your locker room right now and get uh get and maybe by proxy the dark order guys too sure no arguments um main event of this show john moxley cm punk for the world title saw this match two weeks ago moxley killed punk in like three minutes in a squash Mm -hmm. they did the rematch build by having CM Punk play sad sack loser <laughs> on Dynamite this week who needed a pep talk from a walk behinder Ace Steel who's been established as a character on television one time as a guy who helped CM Punk to the back I didn't care for any of this build aside from like Moxley killing Punk <laughs> like I don't know I, CM Punk's like the coolest wrestler of his generation and all um but um i i don't know and i was saying last week i didn't feel like i would have killed the biggest star in my company the way that they killed cm punk that week but i don't know it i don't know about i don't know about any of this it all of this feels like a mess to me it feels like from the story they're telling CM Punk's going to win the title now in Chicago and like that's what you want to do he's your biggest star fine but now he's also your biggest star that you beat in three minutes two weeks ago so if Moxley loses he loses to the guy that he killed in three minutes and uh-huh. if, and Punk Punk wins but we just saw him lose the champion in three minutes two weeks ago is this who 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 has this helped I mean, yeah, it's, we we talked about it at length last week, but to me, that finish only made sense 
if Punk was either going away <laughs> for being secretly suspended, yes, right, for months and would maybe be back for the November show. I know that show's not in Chicago, which is apparently the whole basis for his uh his sudden re energization right um that the match happens to be taking place in chicago but uh yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't have done what they did i think if you just had punk and moxley cut promos on each other for three weeks and then did the match it would have meant just as much i don't i don't I don't get the feeling. Maybe it did. Like it was, it was a moment. You know, it's it's the bro. People talked about it, right? It's it was a huge talking point, and then people tuned in. They were over a million viewers again this week on Dynamite. So, right, it worked. People were excited. People wanted to see what they were going to do next after they did that match. I just don't know personally, creatively. I don't think this is a good story. <laughs> I, right. It's certainly not the way they tell it. Again, if you if Punk was off TV for three months now and, right. and he came back in time for full gear or whatever and you did the rematch then, I would say, great. I think that's a really good idea and a really right. interesting idea. I, right. I, again, based on how viciously Moxley destroyed him, I would probably have had Moxley win the rematch as well and have Moxley just keep beating everyone for a year until you build up a uh, somebody you know on the on the up on the upswing um to to finally be the guy that unseats him but I definitely wouldn't have done it the way they did it um I do just want to say I I will mildly disagree that I didn't like uh that I did enjoy the segment with Punk and a steel Mostly for two things. One, because uh, because a steel said the f- word on, uh, <laughs> on live television, and uh, and two, uh, because <laughs> Punk comes out and the whole the whole point of this promo is before a steel comes out, he's coming out there to retire. Basically, he's right. crying. He's got bags under his eyes. He's sad. He's right. talking about how oh, I just my foot was destroyed and I'm so sad and I think maybe it's time to hang it up. You know, I love yeah. you fans so much, but I just don't think I have it anymore. Except yeah. that one guy <laughs> in the front <laughs> row started trying to chant for Colt Cabana and the real CM Punk <laughs> reared his ugly head once again and he just couldn't help himself and he had to make a joke about how the the screws in his foot after his surgery are 16 more times than this fat dude in the front rows ever gotten screwed and and then he's like oh right i'm supposed to be sad (laughs) i laughed till i cried it was so (laughs) beautiful because as we've talked about in recent weeks that is who he is yep and it was just i adored (laughs) That he just couldn't hold it in. He couldn't just ignore it. He couldn't just move on. <laughs> yep. He had to get a get a de- a dig in at this guy, this this fat guy in the front row who dared to heckle him. Loved it. This is what we like to call vintage punk. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I used to pout. We used to pal around with CM Punk. We've mm-hmm. known CM Punk for 15 years. And then once in a while, you get to see the what I like to call vintage <laughs> CM Punk. <laughs> and you're like, ah, oh, there he is. That's the guy I know. <laughs> yes. Yes. This uh, was an example of that. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, a lot of wrestling this weekend, everyone. <laughs> a lot of wrestling. Uh, enjoy? Question mark. I am going to. Uh, I'm probably going to die <laughs> this weekend. Uh, I hope I make it at least through Raw on Monday night. Um, but I'm going to sleep very little and be watching a ton of wrestling between uh, Friday night and Monday night. So wish me luck. <laughs> and uh, that's all I got. You got anything else you want to talk about? No, that's it. Uh, Godspeed, and thank uh, you. Thank you. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll make it out on the other side of this uh, this wrestling marathon that awaits us this weekend. All right. Until next time, everybody. I'm Ethan, and I'm Liam. 
We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. With all the backstage uh, uh, the d- swinging going around <laughs> these uh, Whoa. these last few months, I might believe that. Um, I learned how to bleep recently. So <laughs> nice. Um, so uh, I can say the F word. I mean, I prefer you not to because it's it's sure. you gotta really like. But I mean, if you do, I can bleep it now. <laughs> nice. Um, right. and, anywho, I feel like um, any, if any one point, if anyone's eyes turn black. Uh, they've either been possessed or they are dying. I think it's fair to say. Yeah. I don't know if that would be like, I mean, what kind of malady would even cause that? Like you say, demon possession, um, something from medieval times, it would have to be. <laughs> and they would like, they would like inject charcoal into your veins <laughs> to fight scurvy or something. Yes, very much so. Now this week's been this week was fine because I uh had to, I cut cut hours on Tuesday because I had worked too many hours the previous week, and uh, and then I was off today and I'm off tomorrow and I'm off Monday so nice just like Michelle McCool I, I am loving life. There you go. I try to keep on keeping on.